In 2013, Jason Dill and Abe announced that they were leaving Alien Workshop. They did this to start their own board brand. Longtime team manager for Alien Workshop, Chad Bowers, was left with a fragmented team. It felt like Alien was crumbling to become only one small piece of what it once was. And so Bowers leaves with Gilbert Crockett, Jake Johnson, and Tyler Bledsoe, and they start a brand called Mother Collective. Only a few months into existence, they keep receiving cease and desist letters from another clothing company called Mother Denim. After a few months of a legal battle, they realized they probably weren't going to win. So they decided to change everything. And here is born Quasi Skateboards. In an interview with Jankum, Bauer said, the name doesn't really matter. We're still going to be creating the same cool product. So today we're talking about what's in a name and how skateboard companies got their names. What's in a name? How would we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet? What's up guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding, and today we're taking a look at how 50 skateboard brands got their name. Let's get into it. When Steve Rocco and Mark Gonzalez both had less than amicable splits with Brad Dorfman of Vision Skateboards, they decided they were gonna start their own skateboard company and it was gonna be the total opposite of Vision. What's the opposite of Vision? Boom, blind skateboards. When Mike Hill and Chris Carter founded the brand, they were super into conspiracy theories. So much into it that they were actually buying gold, land, generators, and supplies to be self-sufficient, just in case anything were to happen. Then these scary aliens wanted to operate on me. They have big heads, the big black eyes. They had a friend who was deep into it. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the f bulletin boards with conspiracy theories and yarn going everywhere. We're talking Simpsons predicting the future, President Trump giving all his money away. This friend told him about the stealth bomber plane and how it was actually being built in an alien workshop made with alien technologies. And that is how Alien Workshop was founded. When Mike Carroll and Rick Howard were trying to figure out a name for their new board company, they're brainstorming ideas and Mike Carroll want to call it something weird, something out there. And so two of the ideas he had were Onyx and Muni. Muni being based after the San Francisco Transportation Railway. No one was really a fan of the names that he was coming up with. So they brainstormed a little bit more and they landed on the name Girl. And that was because one time someone told Rick Howard that he looks like a girl when he skates. You play ball like a girl. So Girl became popular. The team grew and grew and grew. They decided they wanted to start a second company so they could add more of their friends, bring on more of their family and keep the skateboard dream alive. They decided to call that company Sister. A rival who should remain unnamed heard through the grapevine of what they were doing and actually patented the name Sister before they could name it that. After that, they needed a name quick. So Meg Baltimore, one of the owners, came up with the name Chocolate after brainstorming for a little bit. So from then in 1999, these three decided to start a shoe brand and they were brainstorming ideas for names. Mike Carroll wanted to suggest the name Lakai based off his friend's kid's name, Malachi. But we all know what happened when he wanted to suggest names for girl skateboards. Surprisingly, everyone liked the name and agreed on it. Moving on, in 1987, when Steve Rocco wanted to start a board brand, but he was doing it out of his garage, he wanted a big corporate name to brand it with. He wanted to have a sarcastic name, one that sounded super corporate and non-skateboarding, one that he could sit up in his tower and sip champagne being so rich. So he landed on the name World Industries. Sim Skateboards was founded in the 60s. It used to be one of the biggest board brands in the entire world. It was founded by a guy named Tom Sims, and he got the name from his dad. When Antihero started, one of the first names they had almost picked was Rebel Yell. They dodged a bullet there. Why don't you guys roast my Canadian accent in our proper pronunciation of Antihero in the comments below. Buddy, you're softer than a Tootsie Roll fruit cup. Take your tank top and your Tonka truck and kick rocks. Cake eater. People will be like, F you, I'll kill you. <laughs> Wait, you crossed the line here. In 1973, Richard Novak, Doug's Hot, and... <laughs> 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 Richard Novak, Doug's Hot, and Jay Sherman all started, all, <laughs> all three of them surfers from Santa Cruz came together to start a board brand and they named their board brand Santa Cruz. Where do you think they got their name from? Supreme Skate Shop in New York got their name from a John Coltrane album, A Love Supreme. This is John Coltrane's most famous album. They recorded the entire album in one day in 1964. 
Mystery skateboards. We don't know for sure, but we could say that they might have drawn some heavy inspiration from the movie Detroit Rock City, which came out in 1999. Mystery started in 2003. There's a fictitious band in this movie. And if you hold their logo and mystery logos, they look pretty similar. But hey, we don't really know how they got their name. It's kind of a mystery. My jokes are sick. When famous artist and co-founder of New Deal Skateboards, Andy Jenkins, started a clothing company, the company was called Zero, Faci Zero Facisto. <laughs> what is it called? Zero, Zero Sophisto. The, the, company was, the company was called Zero Sophisto. <laughs> Zero <laughs> The company was called Zero Sophisto, with the polarizing style, Zero being hash, Sophisto being fresh. Eventually they dropped the name Zero and it all became kind of preppy fresh clothing and it was under the heading Sophisto. When Jamie Thomas decided that he wanted to start his own clothing company, he reached out to Jenkins to ask if he could use the name Zero. And that's how Zero Clothing was born under Toy Machine, which eventually became Zero Skateboards. The Huff brand gets its name from Keith Huffnagel's nickname Huff. <sighs> In the 1980s, Sean Stussy, who is a California surfboard manufacturer, decided that he wanted to start his own clothing brand. It was heavily inspired by hip hop and skateboarding, and it's often thought of as one of the first, if not the first, original streetwear brands. He got the name from his grandfather, Mr. Stussy. The Stussy signature logo is actually based off of his uncle's signature. When Fausto Botello started Thrasher Magazine, he used it as a place to put ads for his company, Independent Trucks. He named the magazine Thrasher after a really good skater. He was obviously referring to me. If you guys love what we're doing, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment so we can keep giving you more videos. If you guys are on other platforms, social media, make sure you guys follow us at Shredshop and at Levi Switzer. French fashion company called Returo Apple decides they're gonna start their own footwear brand and they call it Ethnics. It derived from the word ethnic, which was a nod to skateboarding as a subgenre. Not long after, they had to change their name because they got sued by another shoe company called Atonic. They decided to switch the company name to Etnies. Eventually, Returo Apple decided they were gonna sell Etnies. In the US, there's a guy named Pierre Andre. He was running the America side of Etnies. They were worried about a legal battle and an ownership when they were selling, so they decided decided to relabel all the shoes and ship them to America under Etnies America or America. And that's how America Footwear was born. Not long after that, in 1986, Pierre buys and owns the brands Etnies in America, making it the world's first skater-owned shoe company. He then decided he wanted to start a sister brand to Etnies, which was making really technical shoes with groundbreaking technologies. So with this, they take the first and last letter of Etnies and they found S. A lot of people thought that the brand stood for Etnies Supreme. Man, were those people really, really wrong. If you ever hear anyone call it that or think it's that, make sure you shame them publicly or bring up something super dark from their past to get them canceled on the internet. <laughs> in 2008, Ryan Garchel moves to San Francisco and starts filming stuff in the city. Him and his crew start filming some of the most insane hill bombs ever seen. He filmed these hill bombs on his Sony VX1000. Their first video goes viral, took the skateboard scene by storm. They called it GX1000. The name was derived from his last name, Garchel, and VX1000. An aeronautic engineer named George Powell starts tinkering in his garage, making different types of skateboards for his kid. He's using different materials like aluminum aluminium and fiberglass. Aluminium. <laughs> Got him. He meets world championship skateboarder and marketing genius Stacy Peralta and the two decide to become a team. They became the ultimate team because George Powell was a genius in product development and Stacy Peralta brought all of his knowledge from marketing to the table. We're still seeing George Powell create some of the best products known to date with the flight decks and even most recently with the Dragon Formula wheels. If you didn't pick up on it, the brand was called Powell and Peralta. Powell and Peralta. <laughs> For the next one, bud, we're rewinding all the way back to your grandfather's age. 1978 in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. You smell like nachos and you look stoned. You write Taylor Swift lyrics and birthday cards. You prefer kittens and you kiss babies. Pen ply, bud. Two brothers, Peter and Rick, decide to start their own skateboard company called Great North Country Skateboards. The name was eventually shortened to GNC. Their logo was a Ying Yang logo, which was inspired by town and country surfboards. Younger brother, PD, carves a skull into his grip tape, and then he writes GNC below it. After he carved it in, they decided to use the skull logo on some of their boards. And that skull became so famous that people started just coming in and asking for Skull Skate stuff. And then the name eventually stuck. 
Enjoy Skateboards got their name and their logo when company founder Mark Johnson had a dream about it. If you had to name a company after your dreams, what would it be named? And what would be the logo? Put it on the internet. Whew, my fart has felt so bad. Dude, it's just sitting here. It's just, I have to tell it. Go to Joel. Go to Joel. My tooth. Go towards Joel. I'm sending brown vibes your way. When Ed Templeton is deciding on a name for his company, he couldn't decide between two different names, toy skateboards or machine skateboards. His friend and team rider, Ethan Fowler, said, why not use both? How about both? <gasps> and like a kid with divorced parents, they took the names and put them together. And that's how Toy Machine Skateboards was born, with a hyphen in the middle there. I said was born, but I'll just keep it. I've decided to keep it. In 1994, Ken Block and Damon Way, the creators of Drawers Clothing, decide they're gonna start a shoe company. They sign up legendary pros, Colin McKay and Danny Way for the team, and next, they just gotta think of a name. They called the new company Drawers Clothing Footwear, but decided after much thought, it didn't really have that ring to it. So they shortened it to DC Shoes. Baker Skateboards gets their name from an innuendo on being baked and drunk. Andrew Reynolds said in an interview recently, it was pretty childish when looking back, but it was honest and it was where we were at. And that's what the brand's always been. Ooh, I just freaking baked one into Joel's way. <laughs> How would you describe the smell of your farts? Deep. When Mark Gonzalez decided to team up with Deluxe Distribution, they wanted to start a board brand and call it Future. They changed the name from Future to Crooked last minute. Crooked is spelled wrong and Future was gonna be spelled wrong. Mark said the reason that he names his companies with the wrong spelling is because when he was in grade school, his teachers were always harping on him to spell things right. And now that he's quite successful and he's living a good life, he wants to spell things to shove it in the teacher's faces. In 1977, George Powell starts working and designing a skateboard wheel. If you look at wheels from back then, they were big, clear, gooey wheels that looked like they were made out of jello. George Powell didn't really like it so he was tinkering with different formulas and different products to mix together in his kitchen to try to find a different wheel when he was formulating and he ended up finding a formula that he loved that was hard and fast and durable it ended up coming out this weird opaque white color and so it got the nickname bones because it looked like a bone in 1966, in Anaheim, California, the Van Doren family started making custom one-of-one -one shoes. You could bring in your own fabric and they would make custom deck shoes just for you. It was originally called the Van Doren Rubber Company, which eventually got shortened and given the nickname by customers, Vans. In 1958, a big pier was built into the ocean near Venice and Santa Monica. It was loaded with a bunch of big rides. Ferris wheel, a merry-go-round, a tiger cage, VR goggle set. <laughs> This whole pier, all of its rides, the entire experience was built to kind of rival Disneyland. And although it was very successful for a few years, it eventually had a slow decline into no one really visiting there. Later, the attractions and the rides, the pier, they were closed for good. And in 1975, the pier got burnt down. When it burnt down, it left a lot of debris in the ocean and in the waves kind of around the ocean and the shore there. Like if you were just playing belly flopping around, you could get stabbed with one of the pillars. But surfers took to this really rough and raggedy area and it got the name Dogtown. It eventually became kind of where skateboarding was invented. And that's where Dogtown Skateboards drew their name. Locals only, ho! In 1992, Andy Howell and a friend start a skateboard company, Underworld Elements. Soon after, Andy's friend and teammate, Johnny Schillereff, joins the team. A few years later, it looked like they were gonna go out of business. So Andy decided to move on to other things and explore other things. While Johnny stepped up and decided he was gonna keep the brand alive. He ditched the first half of the name, Underworld, and it became Element Skateboards. There was a song called Shake Junk by Lil Jin and Skinny Pimp. If you've ever seen any Shake Junk videos, you'll probably recognize this song. Shake Junk, Shake Junk, Shake Junk. In 1992, Tony Hawk leaves Powell and Peralta Skateboards to start Birdhouse Project Skateboards. He did this by refinancing his house, giving him $40,000 to invest into the company, and he started it with his friend, Per Willander. He got the name Birdhouse Projects, referring to how his graphics were on Powell Peralta of all birds and all that kind of stuff because he was the bird man. They eventually dropped projects and just kept the name as Birdhouse Skateboard. Palace Skateboards started as a crew called the Palace Wayward Boys Choir. When they started a brand, they shortened it to Palace Skateboards. 
In the 1930s, a guy named R.J. Mitchell was designing single-seater fighter jets for the British military. They were famous for their elliptical wing and thin cross-section, which allowed them to be much faster than other planes. Originally, when it was designed, the parent company that he was working for came up with the name The Shrew for the design. Apparently, Mitchell said, that's a bloody silly name for a warplane. A worker at the company suggested you should actually call it The Spitfire. He got that name from a nickname that he called his daughter That Little Spitfire. These planes went on to be the most commonly used airplane for the Allies in the World War II. This is also where Spitfire wheels got their name. I'm glad they didn't call it the Shrew Wheels. That's gonna be it guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and you just watched 50 skate brands and how they got their names. Let's stay tuned for comment of the week. Oh, we got a spicy one from my dog. Hi, what's up? He says, get a better haircut but love the vids. Listen, bud, you know nothing, but I do. I'm a barber. Hit me up on Instagram at notopensunday. Come in and get your haircut in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'll cut you. Pan down. Be a little BTS, baby. <laughs> if you like this video, watch one of these two.